Hey everybody, welcome to the second part of the TTO1R uh, conversion kit being built by RC Sparks for East Ridge Hobby Uh You can see here that I've already unpacked the box. I wanted you guys to see what the TTO1R was stock right out of the box. You can see here plenty of high durability plastic parts. You know, any speed is going to end up snapping these parts. But still, right out of the box, this is a good kit to get. A good starter kit for a nice race car. We are doing the drift conversion anyway. Look at you can see the motor right there. Zoom in on the motor. There we go. So we got the motor. This is a brushed motor right stock this is going to do you guys if you want to do any kind of racing is completely legitimate completely legal when you get into the races there are not going to be any qualms about this motor here uh, i know with the brushless setup that i'm going to be putting in there there might be some questions i might not be able to race it but who cares we're trying to build an awesome car to look at plus functionality on the street and on the track so when we have a look at the center chassis here, you can see that the TTO1R actually comes with an aluminum drive shaft. It's not installed, I just laid it down the chassis so you guys could have a look at it in place. That is a pretty nice look, really clean. Uh, we're looking at the tires here. These are the stock tires that come with it. Really good for on the carpet, really good for out there on the road. If you're going to hit any ice, good luck. You guys are out of luck with these ones. But uh, we have some alternate tires we're going to be switching out. You guys will be able to see them in a few minutes. It comes with four mags, of course, to be attached with the tires, the battery plate, the chassis plate, the front bumper. Everything is already installed, or pardon me, already supplied uh, for this kit, ready to be installed. Uh, also, the instruction manual. I'm not going to go over that. I think we should just get right into the first steps of building the car. Let's have a look. All right, so the very first part of this build is basically to attach the spur gear to the output drive shaft. Uh, well, the drive shaft, output drive shaft is what I call this piece right here in bag A. You can see in the Tamiya TT01R uh, kit itself, it comes with an aluminum output drive. Uh, already you can see it here it's blue um, the TT01 from what I understand does not come with this so this is one of the hop-ups that actually are going to uh, accompany the aluminum drive shaft notice that we're using bags A, C and the obligatory no-name bag this is where the optional 58 tooth and the 55 tooth spur gears are located if you look in the first section of the instruction manual you will see the corresponding letter A but as always, Tamiya adds a little bit of a mystery to this uh, uh, equation where they actually mix parts together into different bags. So keep those bags separate. You will be able to find those pieces easy enough. So I'm going to assemble the first part here. We're going to assemble the drive shaft. And of course, we will continue on to the next step. Let's have a look at the first step. So I've zoomed in here so you guys can actually see the pieces you need for step one and step two. Uh, when I was showing you the bags of uh, things that were used, this is one of the ones I didn't realize in the beginning that I needed for the 61 tooth spur gear and this small O-ring. Notice the O-ring itself there has a small divot in it, which is actually a direction indicator, and I'll show you what I mean. In the longer outdrive shaft with the first pin, you want to put a little bit of the Tamiya grease right on the inside. That's going to be for the actual drive shaft itself. Then you want to use the small bearing. Bearing slides over like that. Note the directional divot. Divot goes to the inside. Now there's a hole in the output drive shaft. We're going to use this small drive pin, putting that right there. The 61 2 spur gear simply slides on. Make sure that that drive pin doesn't fall out. And then this small circle can actually slide right on like that. You see how it's one assembled piece now. The drive pin is locked inside and you've got your spur gear assembly completed. Now make sure it doesn't detach itself and drop that drive pin out because it's essential you keep it in there. We're going to be placing it right here in the tray. We'll remove this. Of course you never, there we go, look at that. Slid right into place. So just a little bit of manipulation gets it right in there. It's time to move on to step three. So step three actually deals with putting the pinion onto the motor and installing the motor onto the chassis, covering it with a shroud. You can see here in the instruction books uh, what I'm talking about. And I'll just zoom back quickly so you can have a look. These are the pieces that you're going to need, just in case you need to identify them. A handful of screws for the shroud, 
two screws for the motor to be assembled, and the pinion uh, with the small Allen screw that you'll need. It comes with a key already uh, supplied in the kit. I just want to make sure that when I'm putting the motor on, and of course the wires are in an area when they're going to meet with the ESC that's not going to interfere, right? So you don't want to get it stuck in the drive shaft. Part number four is basically putting together the upper and lower uh, rear arms. So as you can see here, you're dealing with K3, K4, and that instantly tells me that we're dealing in plastic. Same with the B series. So here's what the stock parts look like. Okay, basically you can find your arms in here. Now remember, if th this is plastic and you're basically trying to cut these apart, you want to be as precision as possible and use a fresh razor blade. All right, so we can see here that this is actually part B1 uh, by the B here and of course the one there. And be very careful when you're cutting, as most folks know. Quick pre-bend. You can even kind of twist that off the end there and clean it up with the knife if you'd like. Whichever way suits you best, just like that. And then you have yourself one piece. Now, if any of you have seen my builds before, you know that this is not going to be the piece I'm going to use. I've actually been able to pick up these. Now these are from Yao Racing. And made from aluminum, they're going to give me extra precision and some extra durability. Not to mention it, they just look nice. I've laid out the pieces so you can see how they're, you know, supposed to go together. These actually just fit into these small posts use a turn, uh, they're, they're like turnbuckles almost. Uh, these are the optional arms as you've just seen. These blue screws actually come stock with the kit and you can use the supplied wrench to uh, make sure that they go into the posts evenly. And complete. So basically these are the upper and lower rear arms all assembled. Uh, time to move on to step five, which is the differential gear assembly. I'll lay out the parts and we'll assemble it just like any other differential gear. Step six is fairly straightforward, attaching the assembly to the car itself. I've already put one of these smaller size bearings behind the, uh, I'll just show you the pinion gear right there. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of grease to the pinion. Two of the larger um, bearings that you'll need are supplied in one of these smaller plastic bags. And you'll see this actually just fits right into place, just like that. Yeah. You can see it turning the drive shaft. Okay, differential gear. So there, you can see the grease is starting to get on it. Right on. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, oh, it just fell out there for a second. Okay, so time to move on to step number seven and, uh, you know, start putting the front end together. It looks like I'm actually running out of time here. So, hmm, what can I tempt you with so you can subscribe and join for next week? Have a look at this.